Hello, I'm Neil Redden of the AAA National Office in Canberra. Joining us today is Adam Lockyer, Senior Lecturer of Security Studies at Macquarie University an expert in Australian defence strategy, US defence and foreign policy, post-conflict reconstruction, governance and insurgency. Today we will be discussing issues relating to his new book titled Australia's Defence Strategy, Evaluating Alternatives for a Contested Asia. Welcome, Adam. Good to be with you, Neil. What are the important factors in evaluating Australia's defence strategy options? So a maritime state like Australia has uh, enduring strategic interests. What that means is that these interests remain steady across time. So a state like uh, the United Kingdom, for example, has certain strategic interests that have been the same for hundreds of years. So at first, it's th defending the British mainland, then defending the English Channel, then making sure that no hegemonic power takes over the low countries. Uh, next, that no hegemonic power takes control over the continent. And finally, it's a global interests. So a state like Australia has a similar set of strategic interests. First, and primarily, it's defense of the continent, then the surrounding seas, followed by the nearest ports. This is the Indo-Pacific Arc and the Melanesian Arc followed by the fact that no hegemonic power should be allowed to take over continental Southeast Asia. And these are Australia's enduring set of strategic interests. Given that, what are your thoughts on Australia's current defence strategy? So the 2016 Defence White Paper uh, described Australia's strategic interests in much the same way that I just did. However, what they did was they allocated the same strategic weight to each of the strategic interests. Now, Australia being a middle power at best is incapable of defending all of these strategic interests equally. So we need to pick favourites. So what are we going to prioritise? And what we need to do is think hard about how we're going to translate strategic interests into our strategic objectives. In the past, Australia has had clearly defined strategic policies and defence strategies in place. And yet when conflict arises, we often rewrite or even ignore those. Are we capable of defining and pursuing a coherent defence strategy? So our defence policy has remained more or less uh, consistent. Probably about 80% of every defence white paper is the same. Uh, the 20% chops and changes uh, with each version. Now, Australia's defence strategy, though, is uh, re really responds to the uh, main competitors at the time. So although the policy might remain steady, strategy must change depending upon the, um, the opponent that we're facing. Now, this needs to be flexible, and I think it should be, it, it's right, right that we are flexible with our defence strategy. So whether or not we're going to be confronting the Islamic State or whether we're going to be resisting China's push into the South China Sea, this should be flexible. So we need to make sure that we're defining de policy, which is more enduring and relates to our strategic interests with our strategic, uh, with our defence strategy, which is more about our strategic objectives. With emerging US-China strategic competition in our part of the world, what defence strategy do you propose for Australia in a contested Asia? So rather than saying all of our strategic interests are equally important, we need to prioritise and how we would translate our strategic interests into our most important, our primary strategic objective is to think about, well, what strategic interests is within our military power to mitigate and what strategic interests are threatened. What I would then define as our strategic objective is the Indo-Pacific arc. So as China pushes uh, further or expands its sphere of naval influence, down through the South China Sea. And as India starts to expand its sphere of naval influence through the uh, Bay of Bengal, the Indo-Pacific Arc, that's the region, the gateway between the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, is going to be the buffer in this new Asian great game. And so what Australia really wants to do is think hard about how it's going to use its military power to dissuade and deter 
these new great powers from strategic competition in through the Indo-Pacific arc. Um, that will really mean a regional response to these emerging great powers. That concludes today's discussion. Thank you for joining us, Adam. Thank you, Neil. If you have further interest in global politics, defence, strategy and security issues, please visit internationalaffairs.org.au, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Thank you.